What are we starting with this week? A wee review. We re- we re- we review. You're right. It is a wee review. So this one says, awesome podcast. Thumbs up. And it's got five stars. I really love this podcast. I tend to listen to it as I'm drawing. So I'm not always paying attention. <laughs> should have read me on the first line of this one uh so i randomly just zoned back into luca jamp saying something funny and Corey tried to get the podcast back on track through the laughs but i do learn stuff and it's always interesting to learn learning about new things perfect mix of learning and comedy i binge listened to all the episodes recently and it's weird knowing i've listened to like 100 hours of this podcast oh wow it's been a hundred hours. We'd think that we've made a hundred hours of this podcast. You could listen to this podcast for over <laughs> two days straight. Ew. Actually, over like four for, uh, or more days yeah. straight and not and yeah, not have to stop. We are officially longer than a <laughs> Harry Potter marathon, which is good to know. Good to know. And yeah. it's much, much more interesting than Harry Potter marathon. <laughs> yes. <laughs> but no, if you want to leave a review, you can head to Apple Podcasts and leave a review there. We'd very much appreciate a little five-star review. It really helps out the podcast. Shall we start the show, guys? Let's start the show, guys. Let's crack on with it. Let's start the show. Welcome to the Sci Guys, the show where we talk about the crazy, weird, and wonderful stories from the science world. I'm Corey, and as always, I'm joined by my co-host, Jamp, and Luke Cutford. Hello! Well, hello there. This week, we're talking about being gay and doing crimes. Oh. <laughs> I've done one what? of those things. <laughs> and it's not being gay. <laughs> <laughs> ah, but being gay may be a crime. Oh, so oh it is a crime. Two birds with oh, one stone. Damn. Yeah. What, what's the face for? Like, what are you thinking? What's going on in that noggin? I'm just trying to work out what we're going to be talking about. Talk about I'm trying be- to work. I'm trying to work out if you're talking about but when being gay was a crime or where being gay still is a crime, etc. Okay. How how does science come into that? Ah, uh, the science. Of science. Uh, did you forget what the podcast was about? Yes, I did. <laughs> We're on the crime, guys. <laughs> Is it about whether whether gay people are more or less likely to commit crimes? It's not about that. Oh. It's about a very specific gay crime. And I... <laughs> That sounds awful. It's a, <laughs> a crime against fashion. It's, a, <laughs> <laughs> it's about a very specific crime by a gay person. So let me tell you a little bit about Anne McLean. You guys heard of Anne McLean? That sounds like a name. Yeah, it is a name. Yeah. It is a name. You guys will know who Anne McLean is soon. You'll feel. Oh. You're, you're going to kick yourself. Okay. So she was born on the seventh of June, nineteen seventy-nine. She's you know um, forty-one years old at the at the time of recording. Okay. Um, she was born in Spokane, Washington. I hope it's pronounced Spokane. If you're from Spokane, Washington, please let me know. Um, she was raised there also. Now, she does enjoy a bit of weightlifting. She likes some rugby. She likes some golf, biking, CrossFit, and running. Um. I'll tell you where I got that from in a bit. Um, let's go through her education. So she graduated from a preparatory school um, in 1987. She got a bachelor's of science. Just stop me if you if you know what I'm going to be talking about, by the way. She got a bachelor's of science in mechanical um, and aeronautical engineering from the U.S. Military Academy <gasps> at West Point in 2002. Was she, it, was she like closet in the military she when w- you weren't allowed to be gay in the military? <laughs> I mean, she was, yeah, but that's not the story. Is that not? I mean, that was a crime. I assume when that happened. No, don't. So, don't ask, don't tell was a thing that, that, that they had in the U.S. where um, you were allowed to be. So, first of all, initially you weren't allowed to be gay in the military. I'm fairly sure. Right. Um, in the U.S. Um, and then they had don't ask, don't tell, which meant that you, they they were no longer allowed to ask you if you were a homosexual, um, and they were no longer allowed, and you were no longer allowed to tell anyone if, that you were a homosexual. But you could be gay in the military so long as you didn't ask someone if they were gay. And he didn't, and they didn't tell right. you. I think you just were gay together. Yeah, this is me picking yeah. this up from what Obama said and from The Simpsons. So it may be some of the details may be a bit fuzzy. <laughs> Subject there. to change. Yeah. <laughs> that has been repealed though, so you're allowed to be gay in the military now. And talk about Great. it. Great. Yeah, and talk. Yeah, and yeah, talk about and it. Talk about it. <laughs> talk about it. Talk about it to your heart's content. So uh, she wasn't in the military when it was literally illegal to be gay in the military. She could have been. I actually don't know when that was. Okay, because that would be, I guess, a gay crime. I mean. I suppose it would be. Yeah. yeah. Mm. Okay, well, anyway, carry on your story. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, yeah, she um, uh, graduated, graduated. She got that Bachelor of Science um, at the U.S. Military Academy in West Point in 2002. And then um, in 2002, she then went on to uh, get a Master of Science in Aerospace Engineering from the University of Bath in England. Um, 
and she graduated from that in 2004. And then she got a Master's of Science in International Relations from the University of Bristol, which is in Bristol, which is in England, and that was in 2005. Um, so she's a senior army aviator. She had over 2,000 flight hours um, in different, um, in over 20, in 20 different rotary and fixed wing aircrafts. This as kind of, she's, flying, is. she's flying them as opposed to like remote flying? No, she, yeah, she's been, so yeah. she's been in those, she's uh, been cool. in those, yeah, she's had 2,000 flight hours. She's a pilot. Cool. Um, uh, and we know who this person is. You know who this person is. This next sentence, the That's next sentence true. I'm about to say is going to give it away, okay. right? Okay. But I, I want you guys to... I'm, I'm currently clueless. Okay, so. right. I will... Before I say this next sentence, let's, let's go through the facts that we know already, right? I really want you guys to get this. Okay. So, this is science-based, right? Yeah, right. She's, she's, she, does some, she does something very science-based, something we've spoken about before. She is a pilot. Hang and on. She has, is the thing we've spoken about before that's science-based, is, is, that, is that thing gay? We actually have spoken about a, a gay person that did the same job. She so, a pilot, uh, uh, astronaut. Yes, she's an astronaut. Ah, yeah. So, what gay astronaut do you know about that um, may have Sally Ride? May, may, yeah, Sally Ride, but that may or may not have committed a crime in the recent in in recent years. Well, well, you guys the, must have heard about this the story. The space heist, right? The space heist. <laughs> I can't remember. <laughs> I mentioned it before. You have mentioned. I know. You, <laughs> when we did the episode on Sally Ride, one of you mentioned this. I thought. I thought you'd get it. But we'll, 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 we'll talk about. Oh, it, it is that. Yeah, it is. Oh. Yeah, we'll, we'll get. We'll get there in a bit. Okay. So, um, in 2013, she was selected as one of eight uh, members of um, the 21st class of NASA astronauts, um, and she, yeah, she became an astronaut essentially. So she's been up in space a couple times, I think. Um, she finished her training in 2015, in July, um, and she has been to space. So, most recently, she was the flight engineer on the ISS, uh, the International Space Station, um, for Expedition 58 and 59. So I think she went up to space once, but I think it was for two different, um, two different missions, technically. Right. Different. Yeah. Um, so, that was from December 3rd, 2018, to June 24th, 2019. Um, so, they launched from, I think it was Russia, so the uh, Baikonur... Cosmodrome <laughs> on the Soyuz spacecraft. Um, she was. She had. There was obviously a bunch of other, other, a bunch of other astronauts there with her. Um, Canadian astronauts, um, Russian cosmonauts, um, and they did hundreds of biology experiments, biotechnology experiments, um, science, uh, experiments about physical science and earth science, and also looked into small devices that could um, sort of uh, basically replicate um, the structure and function of organs from humans. Um, and they also did DNA editing in space for the first time ever. Um, and they recycled, uh, they did things about recycling 3D printed material. And she did two spacewalks um, and did 13 hours and eight minutes on her mission to space um, of spacewalks. Um, so she spent a total of 204 days in space. <gasps> yeah. Oh God. Yeah, it's cool. Um, so let me tell you guys about the crime. Have you guys heard about this crime? No. I've I've forgotten the details. I, I call it space heist, but I don't I don't think it's actually a heist. It was <laughs> something like between her and her wife. I can't remember. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I can't remember. So in August two thousand nineteen, let me tell you about Summer Warden. Um, mm. Summer Warden is an Air Force intelligence officer living in Kansas, um, and she used to be married to Anne McLean. Mm -hmm. But they have separate. They they since separated. Oh, and divorced. Yes. Yeah. Sorry. And in 2019, they were going through the process of that divorce. Yeah. Yes. So essentially, there was a lot of dispute about this. There was a lot of there was a lot of trouble around it because look, are you distracted by your cat? <laughs> Sorry, she's just so cute. <laughs> she's walking around. <laughs> <laughs> I am listening to everything you're saying. I promise. <laughs> I am. I am yet to see the crime here. Because I'm telling. Is it a crime? Is it like a crime? Are we not going to like this person, or is it like a crime that actually we don't think should be a crime? Well, you. There was a claim of a crime, and a crime was committed. I am telling you about gay crimes from space. Well, that's just that's that's hotly disputed, isn't it? Oh, yeah. So we'll we'll get to that. We'll get to that. But yeah, um, it is interesting though because there are there thinking about uh, crimes in space is always um. It's not, we've not been to space very often. There aren't any so, crime. You can't, I mean, is it international law? Does that apply in space? Well, we'll, we'll, we'll get to that. We'll get to that. Because yeah, there are specific space laws about crime. space. There's no like banks to rob up in space. That's exactly. It's yeah. quite difficult to do any crime that isn't cyber crime in space. Yeah. And that's exactly. Or murder crime. You could, yeah. Well, yeah, but that's pointless. You could isn't just it? go full among us and like stop. 
killing people. Yeah, but then okay, no, but you couldn't because then you just die in space too. Yeah, because it'd be hard to get back down from space by yourself. Yeah. And also, they wouldn't want to send up. They wouldn't want to send anyone up because if you were in space in your spacesuit wielding a knife, right? Anyone that came <laughs> onto the space station is like, well, they've got a knife, mm. and we've got to get off the our spacecraft to get into the station. Mm -hmm. So they've got like you know, they've got the element. Of, they've got the element of surprise. They've got the high ground. Yeah. <laughs> I would just like to see it personally. What an astronaut go nuts and just yeah. start. Uh, I, I need a film. That'd be a great horror film, yeah. I think. Yeah. yeah. So um, You're right, that's what the space movie genre needs. We've got bored of like just oh look at the good gravity oh, effects we can do. You need aliens, murder in space, but like yeah. realistic, like on the ISS, two thousand and one Space Odyssey style murder film. Because this is the thing, right? All of the space films that we've got so far, right, are either about sci like are either sci-fi stuff where oh, there's an alien that's killing us, mm -hmm. right? Or it's like oh, it's um, it's Clover Cloverfield the paradox. Cloverfield paradox, where it's, and like, it's like ultimate ooh, dimension, ooh. Ah. or it's just being in space is really dangerous and a lot of people die, like that film that's coming out at some point in the future, and all gravity. of the many other films, yeah, and Gravity, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Basically, most space films is about how dangerous space is, right? I think there should be a film, and it should be set up as though it's like alien right mm -hmm. where there's like there's something stalking them on the ship mm -hmm. and they, they think it's an alien or whatever and it actually turns out it's not an alien it's just mm -hmm. a crew member that's uh it's kind of a bit nuts you're right yeah. you need to like you know Scream. how like they've got all these films where someone being gay is the whole thing like mm. it's a gay film and then you get films where it's like being gay is an incident incidental part of the character you need space to be an incidental part of the story and actually, yeah. it's just a really solid story yeah. that just happens to be in space. That would be really cool. Oh, man, yeah. sound, I'm already watching this film with my head. It sounds so... Like, the visuals you could get from... Exactly. Like you could but it gives you a, yeah, it gives you a good excuse for them to be trapped in, like, this one contained area. I mean, it's, a per it's perfect yeah. for a horror... That's why we've done it for horror so many times. Yeah. But, like, in terms of, like, the, the human element of it... Oh, wow. Gosh, Luke, can you write this film, please? I will begin now. Because <laughs> like you in like, every slasher film, I'm just like you'd go to the police, wouldn't you? You would just go straight to the police. Houston, it. Houston, we have a uh, oh my god, and the blood splatter in space. Oh, oh. those fluid simulations would be gorgeous. Oh gosh, wow, lovely. That is... Okay, right. 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 <laughs> we need to write this. Sorry. Copyright side business guys. meeting on the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> Don't steal it. Don't steal it, please. It's ours. It's our idea. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I, I told you about Summer Warden, who um, was an Air Force intelligence officer. She lived in Kansas. Kansas. She was married to Anne McLean, uh, and since then, uh, she like in, two, in the summer of 2019 or in August 2019, she was going through divorce. Now, Summer Warden had a son um, who was born about a year before she met Anne McLean, and so she and Anne raised this child. Mm. Um, and obviously, the the kid was about what four years old when Anne started going to space. So mm -hmm. Anne had basically raised him uh, from the age of like about one. Yeah. So, you know, th that's just to give you an idea of their kind of, their kind of relationship. Um, and Summer Warden worked at the NSA, National Security Agency. And um, she did not want McLean to adopt the child. So what could happen, what would usually happen, or not what usually happen, what could happen is if you're, um, if you've got a partner um, and you are raising your child, your biological child with your partner, who is not the biological parent of your child, you can mm. have the partner adopt the child and then they'll have all the same rights as a biological parent. Mm -hmm. Now, Summer Warden did not want that to happen. She was like, no, 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 no. You no, 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 no. Um, and in early 2018, they were still married. Um, and Anne McLean went to the court to get shared parenting rights. Um, because, um, and also the exclusive right to designate the primary residence of the child if they couldn't reach a mutual agreement. Because basically, I think they were at that point um, going to separate. Um, and apparently, Summer Warden has a temper um, and is not very good with money. Um, uh -huh. And essentially, Anne McLean had, she was, she's the kid's parent. Like, she yeah. raised the kid. Uh, and so she wants, to, she wants what's best for him. So she's um, trying to take the kid away from the biological mother and adopt the kid well not take the kid away so while they were still together she wanted to adopt the kid so she would have parental rights over the like of the kid along with sure yeah, so, so it's it essentially supersede. her kid it just uh, yeah it's just not biologically yeah it's child. just that with the law like biological children when it comes to like parent parental rights you you basically have them automatically as a biological parent but um if you if you're not a biological parent you need to 
go through the courts to get that. And, and how long were that. they? How long was she raising this? Um, four years. Child. I mean, about pretty, four years at that point. Pretty sizable amount of time. Wait. So was the kid? How was the kid? Sorry, lots of questions. She met the kid when she was when the kid was about one. Okay, so it's still a child, child, and she's raised it for most of the child's life. So we'll consider her as much of a parent as the other person. Yes. Exactly. Cool. exactly All right, point. legend, you not... do that. That's wonderful news. <laughs> <laughs> steal that child. <laughs> she's not stealing, and this is, she's not trying to steal the child. I, you know, she's That's on Twitter as well. I was gonna, t- I was gonna tag her in the tweet about this episode, but now, no, we can, no. we can cut the steal that child. No, I no, can no, just no, do it right. again. I can just say, no, no, yeah, no, no, no. <laughs> Look, you are standing by your words. We're keeping no, that no, in. No, I mean this in like uh, that's how the uh, the biological mother will view it. But like, I'm oh, yeah. all for it if if the biological mother's not doing very well. <laughs> well, from grab what it that seems, child. <laughs> from what it seems, it doesn't seem like she was trying to steal the child because she like obviously, obviously. They would both still have parental rights. She would just get to decide where the kid lives primarily. Mm-hmm. Okay. And if, if she is the steal that child to comment, then yeah, yeah, you can, <laughs> I'm, you can cut it if you want. No, 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 no. no, no. Oh. We're not embarrassed by it. We're not oh. embarrassed by it. We didn't say it. I just want best, what's best for the child. Okay, <laughs> <laughs> I don't care about either of these people. Just cut, just child. <laughs> um, so yeah, so the idea here is not to steal the child for anyone listening. It's more <laughs> to make sure that she has the right to sort of determine where the child is going to stay because mm-hmm. um, she wants what's best for the kid and staying in an unstable place may not be what's best. So she also went to NASA with the kid because at this point she was, you know, um, she was working with NASA, working for NASA um, and she had official NASA photos taken with her and um and her, well, let's call her her son. Um, and yeah, this is this is the thing. The the uh, the, the biological mother of the son um, got quite annoyed about this, supposedly. Mm. From what Just I've the seen. pictures. Yeah, because they were separating and she thought it was, I, I assume she thought it was a baby, baby a bit out of line to get official government pictures taken mm. with a child that wasn't hers, you know? So the mother of the mother, like the the biological mother of the son, was like, "Hey, we're mm. going through a separation, and you don't you don't get to be the parent of this kid anymore because you're not with me, mm. and so don't take him to see, don't take him to NASA and get official pictures taken and post it on Twitter. Yeah. Don't do that. Maybe don't. Um, so it's the, those pictures were taken down, um, and this is this is this is a quote from Anne McLean." The hardest part about training for space is the four-year-old I have to leave behind every time I walk out the door. Um, And that's what she said about about that time. So, like, this is just setting the scene for you, laying the groundwork, letting you know that it's not just some random kid. This is her son, you know? She's raised the kid. Yeah. Sorry, can I just quickly ask? Yes. I have lost track, and I feel like some people also may have lost track with me. The biological mother is the astronaut, or the biological mother is the NSA person? Biological mother is the NSA person. Astronaut is the... um, Anne McLean. Is the Anne McLean. Yeah. So the astronaut Not, is the person hoping to adopt the child. Well, she she was tr- she wanted to adopt the child when they were still together so that she get could get parental rights. And is now hoping to become one of the primary parents despite the breakup. So this was in 2018. Before I we... mean now as in in this story as I'm following it in real time. Oh, okay. Yes. yes. Present day in the story. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Don't spoil the ending, Corey. <laughs> okay. Right. Let me let me give let me give us a quick roundup of what's happened so far. Yes. Okay. Anne McLean, the astronaut, was married to an NSA agent mm-hmm. who had a son, and Anne McLean, the astronaut, and the NSA agent raised the son for a few years, mm-hmm. but then they went to separate. Mm-hmm. Now, the NSA agent has always had always kept Anne McLean at sort of a bit of a distance from fully claiming parental rights over the son, and. And there were some issues in the relationship, and the NSA agent, Anne McLean, thought that the NSA agent wasn't um, necessarily fit to decide where the son's um, primary re- primary residence was. Mm-hmm. So Anne McLean tried to get those rights, and there was some hardship there. Anne McLean also took the son to NASA, took some pictures, posted them publicly, and the biological mother, the NSA agent, did not like about that. No, no was no, not happy. No, no, no. no. So, um, the, so the, the, like, because that was all on social media, um, the biological mother, the NSA agent, uh, was not, not happy at all. Cause she didn't, like I, like I said, she did not want Anne McLean to be seen as the, the mother of, of her child. Um, and so, um, she filed for divorce. The NSA agent filed for divorce claiming that, um, well, basically she filed for divorce and then Anne McLean accused her of assault. But the charges for that were later dropped it's a whole messy it's a very messy situation oh my goodness yeah so um 
this is the thing. That was where that was. And then in 2019, Anne McLean's ex-wife, the NSA agent, mm -hmm. um, noticed that someone, someone oh, had no. been looking at her finances. Oh no. From someone, space? What? <laughs> the IP address was like space. <laughs> Zero. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Sorry, I ruined it, but wow. Yeah, you, you did. I mean, who <laughs> else is it going to be? Bit. Who is it well, going to be? <laughs> the child? Could have been. No, so... Um, <laughs> <laughs> so she yeah so she went to she went to her bank she went to her bankers she was like oh da, 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 coming from space it was from uh well basically it was from a computer network that was registered to nasa um she only knows one person that mm. has access that's from nasa mm. that's from nasa the child. who could it be the child, could be the child. he was he at was, nasa there's pictures of him there <laughs> um, and at this point Anne McLean was in space she was on a six month mission um and she was about to be she was about to do nasa's first all-female spacewalk as well, <gasps> talked about part that. Of that. Yeah. <gasps> well, so um, they left without her because she was too busy hacking the bank. <laughs> okay, so <laughs> I need to stay back and do something. You guys sorry. go ahead. I'm, I'm gonna get into this I'll, bank. I'll catch up. I'll speed walk. I'll do a, the first space speed walk. <laughs> <laughs> so Anne McLean didn't uh, like claimed that she did not do anything wrong. Yeah, that she had access to the account because the password hadn't changed, and she was doing what she always did, just looking over the finances to make sure that. Um, her ex-wife and her son had enough money because as we've already established that ex-wife not necessarily the best with money so very true. Yeah, very, very, true. very very true as you know you know her very I well know. yeah she's awful yeah. <laughs> reel that one in reel that one in <laughs> real people we're talking about that are still alive and could potentially oh, listen yeah. to this oh, podcast dear. Oh, it is no. a strange feeling we're usually talking about people who are dead and we're dead talking life. about their actions in the 1900s now it's like oh these people are still going about and that's and can um, be mad at us on Twitter. And I called one of them a child thief. <laughs> no, it is very strange to be talking about someone that is still alive. So she was supposed to be a part of the first all-female spacewalk, um, and there were all these issues about um, you know the whether she'd committed a crime. Um, and again, like I said, she said that um, she she was just doing what she normally did. She was just looking after the finances, making sure that everything's fine. She didn't actually touch or change anything. She didn't look at anything that she, that she didn't have any um, sort of permission to look at. Um, <laughs> Um, yeah, she basically looked at the bank account from space to check that um, her ex-wife had enough money. Such a flex. Right? <laughs> <laughs> just checking your money from space. Don't mind me, just checking my ex-wife's bank account from space. <laughs> oh, sorry. Hold on. You think I'm looking down on you? Well, I am in space. So. <laughs> it's kind of hard to not look down I'm on looking you. Looking down being, on everyone. Being so high up here. I mean, yeah, you can say I look down on everyone from space. You look so small from here. I look tiny little ants, tiny little ants mm -hmm. down there. Oh, I can't even see you. Because <laughs> <laughs> I'm in space. <laughs> oh, have you lost weight? Oh, you're just really far away, so you look, you look small. <laughs> <laughs> um, oh, oh, he loves you to the moon and back. Well, guess who has been to the moon and back? Me. He's not space. gone past me. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't oh, seen him. <laughs> <laughs> God, I honestly, this is the thing. I really, I want to go to space, but I should not be allowed to go to space because I know I would never let it go. It'd become a <laughs> core right. part. <laughs> like, it would be a core part of my personality. New personality crate. Ding. <laughs> <laughs> like, do you know those people that go on like um, a holiday to like um, a backpacking holiday or like a, a gap Barbados year and then they never shut up about it? Oh, it's like that time I was in Barbados. Oh yeah, you know, I was just really helping uh, those like poor African children and like, you know, it really teaches you a lot about yourself. I just be like, <laughs> Yeah, so I was up in space and you're know, seeing the earth. It just really teaches you a lot about yourself, you know, like the mm. new perspective, you know, no uh, gravity. Honey, yeah, the oven's warmed up. It's like when I was in Bali, <laughs> it's just like that kind of warm, you know. Oh, oh gosh, I dropped the glass. I'm, I spilled that glass. I'm sorry. See, if this was in space, it wouldn't have spilled. So I'm yeah. just so used to being in space. <laughs> <I> Stay <stayed> there. <laughs> sorry, I'm just so used to space. <laughs> <laughs> You do it on purpose there, as well. You'd be like, oh, oops. Oh, yeah, you oh, specifically oh, drop a glass it. of red oh, wine on your friend's rock. Oh. Be like, oh, see if this was in space. Sorry, I'm just saying, so space, <laughs> silly me. <laughs> <laughs> Who could blame me? So, anyway, I said to Houston, oh, Houston, sorry, that's space talk. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so, um, <laughs> back to Anne McLean. <laughs> so, I mentioned this all female spacewalk. Um, and McLean was going to be on the first all-female spacewalk. It was going to be two of them going to, uh, to do a spacewalk. Spacewalk is when you put on your your spacesuit. Okay, now when you say the first all-female spacewalk, I picture like 
five women. Oh yeah, I definitely thought it was. I thought it was like more... five, six, seven women <laughs> all only... going out together. I know there's not that many. But there but were only now... five people on the. I think there were only five people on that uh, mission. Anyway. But I pictured like all of them going out together, you know, and it's they're all female, and it's like that. But it's like I know. Yeah, it's, that's I like saying cool. we're going clubbing, and someone says who, and you're like all of us, and it turns out that's two people. It's just me and you. Yeah, but again, when it's all yeah. Space walks are generally small. So they were it's, it's the both female spacewalk. <laughs> <laughs> yes. The first both female spacewalk. Um so it was supposed to be her and um Christina Koch. Uh but there was a very there was a very sudden change oh, because no. Anne McLean ended up not doing it. And oh. the first all female all female spacewalk was essentially cancelled. Um she was replaced by Nick Haig. And the reason for this, why do you think the reason for this was? Bear in mind it was happening during this uh, media frenzy of uh, the potential crime that had been committed. I guess NASA just were like, um, we think you should not do it because it's, it's it will take away from the amazing moment. Um, and if you get like, if you get like put in jail, it's going to be pretty crap for the all, first all, males, all female spacewalk to have included a criminal. Well, <laughs> you might think that, right? And you could be right. But the reason, the reason that we know, the reason that we were told was that it was actually McLean's own decision because oh. she realized that um, that actually um, during her first spacewalk, she realized that a medium space suit fit her best. It was the best fit for her. But there was only one medium on the ship. Oh, no. And it was already being used by Christina. She was like, oh. well, gosh, I can't use, I can't use another size of space I can't suit. Share. I can't use the one that I used last time. I, 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 you know, so I guess I can't go out on the spacewalk. It's got nothing to do with what's going on in my in my personal life. Um, so yeah, I, I assume that uh, I assume that she was told by NASA, "Hey, probably best that you don't do this." Um, but yeah, no, I. She said that it was because the spacesuit was too small. I see. Yeah. Okay. So the first all female spacewalk ended up not happening. But also, this is pretty wow. awful in that um, she was outed. Uh, this was this was her outing essentially um, because she wasn't out as a as a lesbian at the time. Oh. <gasps> outed in space um the new york times was the one that ran they were the ones that ran the article of the accusation of the crime now this would make her this essentially makes her the first yeah the first um astronaut that is out as um out as gay um, and the first space criminal being, no we've not we've not gotten to the, the bottom hey, of the case yet a lot of people say they don't do a crime we've not gotten to we've not <laughs> i swear i didn't do it we've not, okay right we've not gotten to the bottom of the case yet assuming her guilt is no 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 is, of course well you told me that that's what she did is oh right so she didn't i never told you that's what? what she did okay sorry i assumed terrible of me i told you that she accessed the accounts and i told you why she said she accessed them i didn't but say I, that she did anything I didn't, wrong i don't know if that's i mean i do, i would assume that's illegal because it's not your account but she had permission she said from who the account holder the wife. The wife. Yeah, the, the ex-wife. ex-wife. Yeah. But the ex-wife then went and reported it. Yeah. But she gave a permission. Well, we'll get to that. We'll in, get to in the past. Oh. Things aren't adding up. Things aren't adding oh, up. I know. Dear. So this, but this, uh, this, uh, this outing would make her the first openly um, gay outed. Yeah, no, <laughs> the, the first openly gay um, astronaut. Um, uh, you know. Um, at the time of being an astronaut. Now, there were two other lesbian astronauts. Oh. There was Sally Ride, who we know, yeah. who was also um, Sama- married Bantha, Samantha. Can't find Sa- it. Samantha. Shall I find Can, it? Can you, you Google gay, um, Google gay, gay um, astronauts? Gay astronaut. Gay. It's the second one. Samantha. Oh, I've got it. 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 Wendy B. Lawrence. Yes. Keep all that in. <laughs> Wendy Doobie Lawrence. Yeah, Wendy Doobie Lawrence, though. Uh, no, so the second the second uh, gay astronaut that we know of is Wendy B. Lawrence. She was a lesbian. She came out, I think, in 2018. Um, uh-huh. But after she finished being an astronaut. So she was an astronaut, I think, in the 90s and noughties. Um, so the first openly gay astronaut while still being an, an astronaut, astronaut in space. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Was, um, was Anne McLean. Um, and... It kind of sucks that she was outed in that way. Yeah, you know, kind of sucks. But it, it's it's good that you know that she's still she's still cool. Yeah. You know, she's all right with it. Yeah. It seems. Um, and this is the thing. Um, I've told you this already that there has been some dispute over whether she actually committed a crime in space. So mm-hmm. let's jump forward uh, to April twenty twenty. Um, essentially, there was a long investigation, and it was found out that actually Summer Warden. The ex-wife had lied to investigators, 
Uh, she had lied about when she'd last accessed the account. She'd lied about when the password was changed. She'd lied about um, giving consent to um, Anne McLean. So Anne McLean was cleared. She she didn't do anything wrong. She did exactly what she said she'd done. She didn't no commit crime, crime in space. Committed. No crime. No, but someone else did commit a crime. There was a gay person that committed a crime. Summer Warden. Summer Warden. Yeah. Because she lied. She lied. She lied. She did lie. And so she um, actually got in trouble for her lies. She ended up, um, she ended up basically, she was charged with something that could end up with um, up to five years in prison. So I don't think that, I don't think it's been, um, it's come out what's, what's actually happened to her yet. But um, yeah, so there was a gay and there was a crime, but it's not the one that you think. The gay wasn't in space. There was a gay so, in space. Have there, there been any game. space crimes yet? Well, this is the thing. I'm I've got I've got look, I've got some crimes that have been that are space related. Space adjacent crimes. Um, <laughs> um so in 2011, there was um a widow of a space engineer that was trying to sell a moon rock. Um so they they did a sting operation, NASA, to try and catch try and catch that widow. Which if she has a moon Catch rock, that widow. <laughs> yeah. Well, look. If she has a moon rock, right, and yeah. she got it by not like not unscrupulous means, mm. I think she should be allowed. She to didn't sell go it. to the moon. No. I think the space engineer gave it to her mm. and then died. That seems likely. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I don't think she snuck up to the moon just no. to, nick, to, to nick a just rock to sell on eBay. Nip up to the moon real quick. I'll be back. We're carrying In a the bit of, of night. <laughs> We're carrying a bit of extra weight here. Uh, I'm not really sure what's going on. <laughs> Yeah, no, um, so there was that. In 2013, there was a Russian satellite that was damaged after colliding with um, a, dis a destroyed satellite oh, no. uh, that China had destroyed, actually, with a 2007 missile test. So there was, um, some, there was some criminal damage there. Oh, dear. Um, and then also in 2017, an Austrian businessman, he sued a, a company that uh, does space tourism because uh, he'd put down a deposit for a trip to space but it didn't seem like it was going anywhere. So he sued them to try and get his money back. So those are some, those are just some cases of space adjacent crimes. Just needs to be patient. We'll get there eventually. <laughs> we'll get there at some point. Yeah, no, this is the thing. Um, we don't actually have many crimes that were actually necessarily committed by a person in space. But as more people are going to space, it's becoming more likely. Mm -hmm. And also, as commercial space travel becomes possible, mm -hmm. it's going to be... We, we need to be ready for it. You know, we need to be ready for those space pirates, those yes. space criminals, as it were. Perhaps make a space jail. A space jail. <laughs> yeah. Just a cage out in space. Space rehab facility. Yeah. Yeah. Oh dear. <laughs> <laughs> no, so um, there are some laws in space. Do you, do you guys um, know about any of the sort of general ideas of the laws of space? Or, can't you can't own the moon? Yeah, you can't own the moon. You can't own the moon? No, no one can own the moon. Oh. So there are three main points when it comes to space and law. Um, I'll just read them out verbatim. This is from the, um, where is this from? This is from the UN Office of Outer Space Affairs. Which is the thing. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't know that was a thing until I, until I, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Very much so. Yeah. <laughs> otherwise, it's otherwise known as the Unua. That's the uh, Unua. Uh, uh, yeah. Yes. Um, you've heard of the Unua before, well, have you not? I knew her. Did you? <laughs> and I'm sure you knew her. Oh, of course. <laughs> Luke, did you know her? No. No? No. That didn't make sense. Anyway, the three points um, are, uh, I'll just read them out verbatim. The territory that space law regulates, outer space including celestial bodies, is outside the sovereignty of states' outer space activities uh, to be conducted for the benefit of and in the interests of all states, irrespective of their degree of economic or scientific development. They are the province of all humankind. Essentially what that's saying is that no one owns space, what you do in this space has to be for the good of everyone. Don't be selfish. Good. Space is for us all. But if you went to the moon and then you started a new country on the moon or a new like government, that wouldn't necessarily be bound by you, you um like uh, earthbound laws. It wouldn't necessarily. It could just say, "I'm not part of that treaty." Soz. It might then get nuked, but it could do that. Well, yeah, I don't think that would. The same applies the to Earth, doesn't it? Uh, yes. That's yeah, how America I, happened. Yeah. I remember asking my mum about this when I was very young, just being like, if I just decide my garden's a country, why can't it not be? And I never got a satisfying answer. I might declare independence. <laughs> I need you to look up, I think it's Sealand. Seaville? Look up the country, look up country, a country in the sea. 
There's a there's a man who tried to establish his own country, um, in the sea. It was on a I think an abandoned, either an abandoned oil rig or an abandoned army base, um, in the sea. Um, but so you could you could conceivably do that. <laughs> the it's Principality just, of Sealand. Yeah, Principality of Sealand. There you go. Yeah, and it. I mean, it seems to be recognized at least by Wikipedia. <laughs> it, it, it's not quite as recognized. <laughs> Look, the issue is right. If you're gonna try and make your own country, you need to be prepared for whoever whoever you're taking the land from to Invade. stop you. To stop. Yeah. You. Yeah. To be fair, that is not. It is a mis misnamed because it's called sea land. But like you say, Kari, it is it is a man made structure. Mm -hmm. It is not any land. Yeah, but there's no there's no reason that a man made structure can't be its own country. Yeah, but it's not land. It's, it's true. called sea land. Yes, it's but there's no, there is, there is no New Zeal in New Zealand, is there? <laughs> Shut up! I have not seen, <laughs> <laughs> not seen a, not seen a single zeal in there. <laughs> not everyone in Scotland is named Scott. England is suffering a massive shortage of there's things. There's no ing. Yes. I suppose. Well, the most obvious one is England is not a kingdom; it is a queendom. Oh yeah, United so Kingdom. Sure. It's Sorry, England is not a kingdom. The United Kingdom is not a kingdom, is what I meant. Yeah, yeah, I know. You you just think they're all the same thing. That's fine. Um, <laughs> <laughs> no, so space law covers um, a lot of things. Um, basically, the preservation of the environment of um, space and Earth. Um, you've got to be, basically, who is liable for damages caused by objects that are in space so for example if you send up a satellite and it breaks someone else's satellite mm. you're in trouble you've got to give them you broke That's their so satellite true. you know so did china pay for russia's satellite i don't actually know the outcome of that case but i doubt they it. probably had to they did send a missile at their own satellite i think that kind of breaks the bit about responsibility of the <laughs> environment <laughs> there's a lot of debris in space yeah to be honest. Like, yeah because you can't what, no one goes up to get satellites back down. They just leave them there. They're just up there. They actually just ah, leave them no. There. They push them either towards Earth or further out. Like that's how they decommission them. Is they either use the last bit of their thrusters to thrust back to Earth so that it burns up in the atmosphere, or they've got like a designated satellite graveyard a little bit further out. Yeah. Yeah. But they're not. I had like... to research it at one point for a story. <laughs> what I mean is, they're not going up and taking the satellite and bringing it back down. No. You know? No. Like they're pushing it into space. Should fire it towards the sun. That's actually harder than. Well, you but think. the sun moves. <laughs> so does Earth. <laughs> yeah. So does Earth. Yeah. No, this it's harder to get stuff to hit the sun because there's lots of there's magnetic fields. It's hard to. It's very hard to hit the sun. Mm. It's very big, but it's very hard to hit the sun. Mm. But yeah, no, we're not. My point is that we're not going up with a big net and bringing down all the stuff that we leave in space. With a big net. We yeah. should just try it. Yeah. They're they are trying to do that. Oh, you know, we're, like they're, yeah. they're, I'm not saying that we've not, that we're not I like trying. <laughs> like, we, like, like, this is the point. This is the thing with humans, right? We kind of do stuff for a while yes. until we're like, oh, maybe this is a problem. Maybe we should sort it. <laughs> like landfills, yeah. you know, for a long time. Like for, like, I think Luke, you mentioned this, but uh, for a lot of human history, what yeah. we've done is basically just big a bit, make a big pile, make a big pile, mm. and chuck all the rubbish in there. Yeah, which. I was thinking about this because I think, Luke, I think you did mention this. I tweeted it. You tweeted it, right? Yeah. And it got me thinking. I was like, how could we have done that? And then I realized <laughs> up until very recently, all of our waste was biodegradable because it was all natural waste. Mm -hmm. Like what else? Like until the in sort of um, invention of plastic. Plastic, yeah. Pretty much everything was really biodegradable to some yeah. degree, you know? Yeah. So you could just, you could just take all of your food, put it in a big, uh, put it in a big pile and let stuff grow over it. And eat it. And, yeah. Exactly. Yeah, get you, you take all of your waste and do that. Yeah. So that's why, um, for all of our history, I assume that um, our way of getting rid of stuff was just chucking it in a big pile because you could chuck it in a big pile and it would just degrade. But nowadays we've got stuff that doesn't, and we're just, we're trying to figure out what to do with it now. Oh dear. And so yeah, space law, lots of different things going on there. Rescue of astronauts is one of them. I think basically, I think, I I, I think that if a, an astronaut is stranded, like everyone will help out. You know, it's not like hey. It's not our astronaut. He's an American astronaut. You leave him, you get him your, on your own, America. <laughs> Everyone's going to help out with an astronaut in space. It's like The Martian, you know? You yes. see The Martian? Yes. Yeah, great film. Stuck on Mars. <laughs> um, Throw potatoes. In a way that you would not you would not want to do it yourself. Um, but yeah, essentially the idea of being, the idea of like space laws, essentially, like it's cooperation. It's 
everyone sort of working together to make space a good place for us all you know because it shouldn't mm-hmm. belong to any one country or any one person no matter what elon musk thinks um it, just, it should be for all humankind so if you want more information on space law you could go to the un office of outer space affairs and ask them because they will give you information it says that the un office of outer space affairs provides information and advice upon request to governments non-governmental organizations and the general public on space law in order to promote understanding acceptance and implementation of the international space law agreements concluded under united nations auspices Excuse me, what can I get away with in space? <laughs> hey, um, UN, um, what, what, is, what is legal for me to do in space, please? <laughs> and then not they're suspicious also... suspicious at all. Hmm? Not suspicious at all. Well, I'm not going to go to... Like, can I eat a person in space? Is that allowed? Is it allowed? Probably more legal. No, actually, this is the thing. Uh, a lot of... like So laws... It, people often think, oh, space is outside of all laws, so you could kill a person in space. It's not illegal. It's still mm-hmm. illegal to kill a person in space. Yeah. In fact, there's agreements between... Um, all the countries that send people up to the ISS, like what happens if a certain person does something wrong? I think, I think it's they are basically tried under the laws of their own country. Mm-hmm. But uh, yeah, so it's a whatever it's illegal to do in um, America, it's probably illegal to do on the ISS for America yeah. for Americans. There are also five treaties um, that are basically about um, countries not taking any part of space as their own. Um, saying that it's everyone should be free to explore space, um, and like I said. Uh, liability of damage um, caused by space objects so those are five treaties that have been signed by a number of countries Mm -hmm. um and yeah that's pretty much all that we've got on space law you could get really nitty-gritty into it could probably do that in another episode but um on the surface of it space law is basically just about everyone being nice to each other yeah that's good so funny that we've made that the rule in space but we're not able to do that on the floor (laughs) we did it in our (laughs) antarctica you know sure kind of (laughs) In yeah, that, and like, then we melted in Antarctica. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, no one's allowed to. No one's allowed to set up a permanent residence there. Um, no one is allowed to own it, technically. But the countries that still own the the country, so there is agreement that no one's own that no one owns it. But the parts that each country said they own still are technically kind of owned by those countries. So they won't give it up. Antarctica is a weird place. Look into yes. it. <laughs> um, but yeah, no, that's that's the that's the story of. Um, Claire, Claire, no. Anne McLean. Anne McLean. I know it. I don't know why. I actually Googled Claire this. McCann. I actually Googled it earlier <laughs> looking for Claire. I was like, Claire McLean, that must be her name. I don't know why. <laughs> Anne McLean, that's the story of Anne McLean and the the potential crime in space that she actually yeah. didn't end up committing. Because I remember hearing about the story about her um, being a lesbian in space that apparently committed um, identity theft, uh, which, to be fair, difficult to steal someone's identity when mm. you're in space. But um, it turns out that she didn't actually commit a crime at all. And it was her ex-wife that did all the did all the criming but in summation i think it's important to remember to be gay and do crime in space in space yeah except not do crime no be gay do crime be accused of crime but didn't do <laughs> no, be gay do crime well that's it for this week's episode but it is time for my favorite part of the show what is it mm. the end it's the quick fire quiz mm. <gasps> dun 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 we... gay edition you all know the rules <laughs> And gay, gay crime edition <laughs> <laughs> and i will say them now i will ask you one question one question between the two of you you have to answer the question correctly to win but you've also got to wait for me to finish asking the question before you can win the first person to buzz in with the correct answer they win can i say win one more time yes, go on then go on win okay Ooh. uh jamp what is your buzzer houston luke what is your buzzer click it's the sound of me logging into a bank account <laughs> Interesting. Click. You really should put from a pa- space. You really should put a password on that man. Like <laughs> <laughs> it's no, just one it's click. Click. <laughs> As long as you click, you're in. Click. Okay, so my question for you is <clears throat> What is the name of the second lesbian in space? Houston. Houston. Jam. Uh, Anne McLean? That's the third lesbian. Oh, Nick. Oh, Unfortunately, it's the third. Say. Look. Yeah. In my defense, you couldn't remember it. Uh, and I did remember it. I made a big fuss eventually, about it. Eventually. Okay. It was something with an S, uh, like Sam something, or yeah, some of that. It was Wait. not. Yeah. What? Was Sally Ride? It was the first. That no, was the first, first one. Well, we've gone, all th- we've gone through all three. Uh, you've gone through two. No, th- you no, said- we haven't, champ. <laughs> <laughs> what are you talking about? <laughs> you've given one answer. I've given one answer. And then you've said we've done all three. I've given two answers. <laughs> 
I said Anne McLean and Sally I didn't Ride. give an answer though. I said it <laughs> oh, has the letter uh, S in it. Houston. <laughs> Samantha something. <laughs> Samantha Pamantha. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Oh. It's, Jane? It's Wendy B. Lawrence. Oh, Wendy B. Lawrence. Oh. Ah. <laughs> terrible. Wendy like, Doobie Lawrence. Why don't we go? <laughs> why don't we go for another question? Okay. Huh? Yeah. Okay. It's embarrassing. <laughs> Who was the first lesbian in space? Oh, <laughs> I'm sorry. You made a noise first, Jamp, but looks at his buzzer first. Sally Ride all the way to space. Ding, ding, ding. That is correct. Oh, yeah. Well done, Luke. <laughs> it's been a wonderful episode with you guys today. How do you feel? How do you feel about being gay and doing crimes? Feel good? Gay and criminal. Yeah, you feel you feel like you want to be gay, do crime, go space? Is that your No, plan? I feel very strongly that it's big gay, accused of crime, but didn't do. I disagree. Be gay, do crime. That is the end of this week's episode. You can be the first. <laughs> be the first gay criminal in space. So we'd like to thank all of our patrons with a very special thank you to executive producer. I'll, I'll get there. I'll Ashley Muller and, and Anani May. And, and, and also, thank you for watching. You can find the full references for this episode in the description. Subscribe for new episodes every Sunday and why not leave us a nice wee comment. You can support the pod at patreon.com forward slash sci guys or you can find and contact us at sci guys pod on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, and Sci Guys on TikTok too. Or you can send us an email at SciGuysPod at gmail.com. You can follow me at NotCore everywhere. <coughs> you can follow me at Jumpkin everywhere. You can follow me at Luke Cupforth everywhere. Goodbye.